G'day guys, it's Grant here. Uh, Surfs and Sides will be out in a second. I was just out in the morning doing a nice uh, quiet prune of my espaliers. Anyone that doesn't have uh, any espalier plants in your garden, you're really missing out because it's just a really fun way to get creative and increase your produce. And it's just fun, just fun, that's it. One thing that's a lot more fun than espalier is free ranging chickens because when you free range chooks, there's two, there's well, multiple benefits, but everyone always goes on about the uh, benefits for the chicken but there's one huge benefit everyone misses out on, and that's benefit for the owner. I'm out here, been out here about five minutes uh, pruning and doing a bit of harvesting, and for my entire time as I'm, I'm out here, just, just doing my jobs, I've got all these beautiful companions. These guys constantly talking to you, loving a pat, and seeming to uh, be fascinated in whatever you do, following you around, keeping you company. Brilliant. <laughs> If I had a dollar for every time a chicken keeper or member of the public said that you can't have a nice garden with chickens, I would have retired from work years ago. The notion that you cannot have a beautiful garden and chickens free ranging is an absolute myth. With some careful planning, consideration and adjustments, you can have a lush, vibrant, beautiful garden with chooks uh, sailing around like uh, ships in the bay. Follow some simple steps and I guarantee that you'll be able to have a similar, probably way better garden than mine. Gardeners have said for centuries, right plant, right place, and it will thrive. It's exactly the same with chickens. Get the, get the systems right, get the land right, and you have beautiful things. FYI, that's an Irish strawberry, that tree, one of the best permaculture problem plants for full shade on the planet. I'm really hoping people watch this video, uh, maybe uh, improve the welfare and life of chickens and help dispel this myth that chickens will chop up the land and ruin the land like in this, uh, these fictitious pictures that get thrown all over the internet or used by chicken keepers to justify keeping their chickens in inhumane conditions. So Fear and I went and had a look at this chicken coop uh, during the holidays and we we're absolutely disgusted to be frank. Uh, I've had a gut full of chickens being kept in these conditions and people thinking it's okay to keep things confined. I believe if you're taking something off, off a creature, you have to provide it with the best life possible. So let's stop the myth that chickens can't be free ranged and stop the myth that you cannot have a beautiful garden and beautiful chickens at the same time. It's important consideration when, when free ranging chicken is garden design and garden planning. You can't just throw your chickens in the backyard, uh, make sure you have a good fence and hope for the best. You have to design a garden with chickens in mind. If you have a look at this, this is a, a just a, a stylized sketch of our backyard. When we started the video, when you're up here by the beehive, you might recognize that, that area with a little seat where we do a lot of our filming. Um, first of all, you have to think of your sacrificial area. We're gonna go into the sacrificial area later. This is the um, sort of south corner of our garden uh, where we have our chicken house. It's just a, a little icon my daughter put on. Uh, and our secondary chicken house and our three rotating compost bins. This area is the area that gets chopped up the most of the garden. And we, ref it's referred, we referred to it as our sacrificial area. It's only about, um, if you look at our scale, about four meters by maybe eight meters. And that's where the, the eggs are laid, the nesting boxes and all, all the action happens. Whereas the rest of it is all green space. Now you might notice um, everything's sort of done in linear rows. This is sort of done deliberately um, because of our beehive up here. Um, and our beehive is designed, as you know, uh, bees fly relatively in straight lines. So if you get a ruler from our beehive in every direction, so from here to here, from here to here, these are all fruit trees, obviously, from here to here, from here to here, from here to here, from here to here. So everything's designed uh, for our, both our bees and our chickens. Another thing you'll notice is around the door area here, um, this is our most shaded place. Uh, we plant um, tamarellos, which are amazing plant uh, that's got really deep tap roots. And also it's a great dust bath area. And I'm gonna go into the dust bath area later because the thing is, if you do not uh, give your chicken a place to dust bath, it'll make its own place to dust bath. So you've got to provide it with facilities. Another thing you might notice about a design is the small gap between the veggie patch and the fence, this gap to this gap, and from the corner of our veggie patch to our window here, that's really easily fenced. If we ever find an area that's getting um, sort of hit too heavy by the uh, chickens, what we do is we just 
put a little uh, wire fence and it's just old um, like chicken wire that we put from here to here, here to here, which effectively cuts our garden off in two because it takes about 22 to 24 days to break the parasite cycle. So if your chickens are looking a bit poor health, section off an area and let the ground recover uh, and it'll help with the overall well-being. Another thing you'll notice about our little backyard is you can fence off other areas. You can let the chickens out in the morning. They can cruise up here. Once you get to the fountain, we uh, all we simply do is put a little fence from here to here, just there, and a little fence here to here, and you've got another secluded zone. So essentially, uh, if need be, and we do sometimes, very, very rarely now, um, we will segment off an area during the day to rest it. Okay. So the first thing you gotta be really aware is your planning. Plan for your chickens uh, and make appropriate alterations to your garden. The next rule for free range area is say no to tan bark. And I know this is gonna upset a lot of people. Tan bark is a wonderful resource. We use it in our front garden with our ranunculars and our tulips. However, if you have uh, a fr free range garden that you want a high aesthetic appeal, having tan bark will be ripped up, chopped up and dug up. Chickens love to dig. Give them a good dust bath area, yes, but tan bark is a recipe for disaster because it suppresses weed growth, which minimizes grasses and uh, other annuals and perennials, which is a common food source. So unfortunately, tan bark is a no-go if you want a green, beautiful space outside. Another thing you have to sort of say no to is domaceous earth. Yes, it's a great thing to get rid of insects, but it is fossilized bacteria and microscopic aquatic organisms. There are simple solutions, but it's not a sustainable product that's being mined and it's very bad for humans to use uh, and also very bad for ash and other um, substitutes it's really worth doing now what you're seeing here is us uh cooking some trout that i call a lake yielding another thing about self-sustainability is you should be as sustainable as possible and able to catch your own food um but but what we're doing here is we're just doing some smoked trout and the ash that we used from our uh, plants that we cut and pruned ourselves is also going to be used to enrich the dust bathing area so bear with me a little bit uh, we'll just quickly cook it, um, uh, then I'll get my beautiful wife Olga to, ch to chop it up and then I'll show you how you can add this to dust bathing area to help clean your chickens but minimise respiratory uh, issues uh, both to yourself and to your chickens. One thing we always do, especially when we're left over our meat, is remembering chickens are omnivores and they will smash uh, anything with a high protein content. Um, they really like fish, they'll eat the entire carcass bones and all, boosting their calcium and health. Look at this girl go. We use a lot of outdoor cooking with a smoker and if you have a look at this, we're adding the ash now to our dust bath area. As mentioned earlier, these are tamarillo trees. Uh, a member of the Solanaceae family, and one thing with anything with the Solanaceae family, they really benefit from ash being added to the substrate and it really helps uh, enhance the flavour. Uh, tamarillo trees are amazing, they've got strong tap roots, uh, they'll take an absolute bedding from your chickens. If you look at that large duck board, which is what in Australia we call wood, um, that lump of wood to stop the dust coming out, um, the tamarillos uh, grow really well there, the chickens love that dust area, and in a full shade place, look at that produce you're getting. Tamarillos uh, turn orange or red, um, they're a South American uh, fruit slash veggie, whatever you want to call it, and great for salsas, jams, whatever. We plant a lot of them, as you can see, we're making a second dust bath area. Another thing you've got to do is remember to plant for structure. These are what referred to as columnar apple trees, which are absolutely magnificent. This is about two years old, get about 12 apples off each tree. Um, the chickens will eat the ones about four feet off the ground, which is fine. Because the chickens are such so territorial, they'll keep all the parrots, the Indian miners, the minoras, they'll keep all those other birds at bay uh, and actually give you a better crop. So we actually find we don't actually have to net trees if we're willing to sacrifice the lower stuff to the chickens. So it's a win-win. They get the food and we get the better produce and they get the better soil. So yeah, having chickens in a high produce area is great. 
Another thing you'll see in this video here is planning for structure and planning for shades. Chicken will always find the shade on hot days uh, and you have to have a lot less uh, allowances for hot weather because they'll move around following the sun, following the shade and um, really make, sh make sure their temperatures are regulated properly. So yeah, as I mentioned before, get into these columnar apples. They're absolutely amazing. And yes, you'll see some uh, some poos or craps on the paved area. A high pressure hose before any friends come over is pretty cool. And at the end of the day, you get great produce and you get a great bunch of chooks to share it with. And as you can see, this is the height of summer we're feeling, filming this. We've had four 36 days in a row. And yeah, the grass is looking a bit chopped up. But we actually find by having the chickens free range here, the soil is enriched so much, it actually holds better than uh, the areas or that don't have chooks out the front or the neighbor's back garden. So we actually find having chickens actually makes your, your soil more resilient to hot weather and it makes your area just overall healthy, healthier. Um, also mentioned in a previous video, get yourself some Muscovy ducks because uh, they're the, one of the best fly catchers on the planet. And that means you've got a green space with almost no flies to annoy you or the neighbours. Just like all good lawns, you need to reseed your garden once every season. Now, one thing that's really important is get the cheapest seeds you can uh, and focus on ryegrass. Ryegrass is the original great grass and it's the best great grass, both annual and perennial. Yes, you can get um, blue Kentucky and stuff, but that stuff grows too slow and nothing beats the sturdy ryegrass. Get yourself a good seed spreader just because it's a lot of fun. And as I mentioned before, every season I'll do this. Uh, I usually use about six kilos for 500 square meters, which is more than enough. Um, you walk around, you really heavily seed the areas that have been uh, most heat affected. You can see that that's our dog rooster who's just dropped a ball in our irrigation pipe. That's really helpful. Thanks for that rooster. And you should now see us oh, some ducks drinking out of our no smoking sign because I hate people that leave cigarette butts. One thing I always do when it comes to reseeding, look at the weather radar, reseed before heavy rain because you're never watering grass as well as mother nature will pummel it in with a good rain. Okay, the next step to make sure uh, that your chickens are ready for free range is this, um, sorry about the chooks in the background, is this process called um, institutionalization. Now, this is just something that I've coined and it's a very simple uh, experiment you can do before uh, completely free ranging your chooks. The thing about chooks is 25% minimum of their diet is greenery and that includes grasses, cabbage, whatever green stuff they can get their hands on. And remember, they're also tree foragers, so they'll uh, nip and and chop at all kinds of things like cherry things. However, if a chicken is in a proper environment where it's free to roam and it's happy, it's relaxed, it's chill out, it will actually not poison itself. And by embracing poisonous plants, that is the secret to having a beautifully ornamental and balanced garden that hasn't been smashed up. Now, to test that your chickens are ready to free range and won't poison themselves, there's a very simple uh, experiment that I've been uh, doing over the last couple of years and I guarantee it works. What you need to do is do two things. Number one, head down to your local supermarket and get a bag of greenery. Greener the better, I'm talking rocket, spinach, cabbage, anything that's bagged up ready to eat. Then you go, go hit your own veggie garden and pick some kale or cabbage or anything you can get that's fresh from you. And what you'll notice is the chickens will not eat any of the stuff that's bought from the supermarket and they will smash yours. That's because once a chicken has a really good balanced diet, it's aware of what it can and what it can't eat. Have you ever wondered why when you're driving down Werribee, that's a local place in uh, Victoria, you can see rows and rows and rows of thousands of cabbages growing in the open air without any pests? That's because uh, the farmers of uh, our country, they pump our vegetables with herbicides, pesticides, and in a proper environment, a chicken is aware of just how toxic that is and it won't touch it. However, if you keep your chickens in a coop confined with no grass, you'll get these kind of scraps. You'll, you'll throw it in the coop and the chickens will go tropo and eat the whole lot. However, if your chicken is properly fed, it won't touch that junk. And I'm gonna prove it to you in about one second. So this is a really good test. Uh, if you have uh, chickens and you want a beautiful ornamental garden and you don't want your chickens to poison themselves, give this a try. Let's go. 
spring and the final month of summer as you uh, would do with Victoria. Our main focus at the moment is pumpkin production. If you check out our other videos, we'll talk about how, why and how we free range quail safely. It's just another video, hit our channel up. Uh, those of you that have watched the video will actually notice we've actually scraped out some of our veggie patches because we, we decided we needed some more uh, dirt to enrich our compost. So we uh, harvested some of our own dirt to uh, pump up our co compost. Now you'll see I'm just picking some scrappy bits of kale, the kind of stuff you probably wouldn't use for a salad. And before I go, it's pretty hard to resist these little dudes. Quails are one of the best veggie patch companions. Check out our video and we'll talk about uh, limited free ranging and how they can really keep the bugs down. I probably better get back to the chooks, but you just can't resist these dudes. They're just so classy, cool birds. So uh, without any more ado, let's go give this test a go. All right, second part of this experiment is uh, get your uh, vegetables that you pick from your own garden and to compare it with pre-packed vegetables that you might get for three bucks, four bucks at your local service station or uh, supermarket. Now the idea of this experiment is to prove or test how institutionalized your chickens are. If they've been starved of good nutrition and regular green, green or greenery, they will go absolutely crazy for the bought stuff as much as the grown stuff. If your chickens have superb nutrition, uh, not only will they uh, not be that interested in the bought stuff, they may not even eat it at all. And it's just not eating it at all that allows you then to have all kinds of plants, poisonous or not, as ornamental plants in your garden, and you can guarantee you won't poison them. Let's, let's test this out. All right, I want you to watch carefully i just call them over. Chickens, chook, 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 chook. Chickens. Okay, we've got a couple of them over here. Now have a little look. Ooh, move down a little bit. We've got our veggies. Now I have to admit, the ducks are a lot less uh, picky than the chicken. Okay, so we've got, we've got a bit of action here. We're going pretty choppo. Just gonna see if we can a little look over here. Okay, without a doubt, you can see they're voraciously smashing this homegrown veg. I'll just pop that on the ground there. Now let's compare that to bought vegetables from your local supermarket. Go to a good handful. Choose uh, some chooks who haven't had much of a meal. First thing you'll notice is they're not even looking at it. Let's have a look at this little lady over here. Not even looking. All right, get a little bit more creative. You saw this uh, chook eating it before. They can, they know I'm coming. They're running away from me. Okay, she's having a little look, had one taste, and done. Absolutely done. And what you just see there is what's referred to as non-institutionalized chickens. These are chickens that have had great nutrition their whole life. Quarter of their diet every day is greenery. I can just throw this on the ground and I can guarantee by tomorrow it'll still be rotting there. What does this mean? This means we are now ready to have an ornamental garden that won't be smashed. Because the thing about these chickens is they'll never poison themselves if they've got good nutrition. And when I start to grow things that I know have great flowers for scent and also to feed the bees and great things to eat, I know it won't decimate it. For instance, I, a great plant is lilac. Lilac's a great plant, you get a great flower, great scent. Um, you don't have to worry about your chickens eating it. Daphne's, one of my favorite is Daphne Princess, a great plant. Uh, if I was to put a handful of that in my mate's chicken coop where they live full time, they'd be dead by the end of the day. This is the lilac. And if you have a little look here, right near the path, I planted mine yesterday and it's thriving. Hor hor horrifically poisonous fine other things that a big no-no people always go oh don't plant uh, apricots don't plant apricots around them with the cyanide in the pit there you go there's a 10 11 foot uh apricot tree behind me same with almonds almonds as you know high in arsenic poisonous i've got truckloads of these almonds uh all through here so what you're learning now is if you have enough greenery to keep your chickens happy, you can guarantee they won't poison themselves. I'm thinking Sweet William, 
oleander, all these great plants with great flowers that won't be poisonous. Another thing we do, which is really cool, which helps bleed off the nitrogen, sometimes it's a little bit excessive in the grass, is planting daffodils. Now, when I plant daffodils, my wife and I would try to plant 500 a year because one thing that's amazing about the daffodils is, um, I think their the scientific, scientific name is Narcissus or something like that, after some Greek god. It was a bit narcissistic, no doubt. What happens is, we plant 500 over the last three years. Uh, we've got about 1,500 planted through our backyard. What's magnificent about that is they pop up uh, at the end of winter. You get this magnificent carpet of flowers. Chickens don't touch them because no one wants to eat a, eat a daffodil. However, they eat the grass in between the daffodils. So the grass stays low, the flowers stay high, and you have this incredible display. And people come over and say, how, how can you get so many flowers in such a small place with chickens? The answer is, provide them with enough nutrition, provide them enough greenery. Now, I'm not gonna to lie to you and say you can grow any plant on the planet with chickens. Yes, they will smash and eat some things, especially tender plants, but you can still grow award-winning blooms. In fact, the, just the two images you're seeing now are awards that my wife and I have won. And this is just a, a picture of my daughter, Soph. Uh, she was having a flower arranging party with some of her friends with some of the home produce. The reality is if you want really nice, uh, abundant blooms, a section off a part of your garden, make a nice little picket fence and create a cut flower garden. Because the reality is even with a three or even four meter long, two meter wide patch, you can grow an incredible abundance of flowers. In fact, um, from a two meter by five meter patch, I even decked out when I got married my own wedding. I did the reception hall, we even need poses on our tables. So if you want a cut flower, make a cut flower garden. A sectioned off cut flower garden makes that actual garden feature that people will actually drive to your house to see because everyone loves an abundance of blooms in a small space. Now as a chicken owner and a poultry owner, it is vital and an obligation that you predator proof your garden. And we have a Kelpie that lives during the day without chickens. He's calm, he's collected and is really keeping it together. And this relationship these guys have goes on and on all day. And he is so calm and so in control. But don't be fooled. Just because uh, he's a chilled out dog that uh, gets right up close to the chooks and the ducks and has no problem, don't think that he will not bounce into action because he is there for a reason. And I'll show you a little video. One of our hidden cameras in our garden observed him the other day um, when a baby magpie flew down to check out what was going on in the choir area. And Rooster, our dog, was momentarily distracted, but when he noticed it, his, his reaction was explosive. Now where the circle is, there's a small magpie that just landed at the corner of our veggie patch that's obviously netted and Rooster saw it and his reaction was explosive. That pole that he just slammed in is a three inch steel post that's four feet into the ground. He just seems to shrug off the injury and get back to work. Check it out in slow motion. A really important element when creating a free range garden is what's referred to as a sacrificial area. The sacrificial area is generally around your chicken coop uh, and it's an area that you don't mind if it gets chopped up a little bit, you don't mind if there's a bit of an erosion or if there's a little bit of land degradation. Um, when you have a little look at your garden, you'll have a, you'll notice around your chicken coop is the area that gets damaged the most. Uh, everyone's first instinct is to blame the chicken when in reality the majority of the the damage in your backyard happens from human activity especially during the winter months you're going down up three times a day minimum to check for eggs uh and then once a week for us we once a week we do a complete cleanup out of our coop changing beddings uh and also mite treatments health checks and in winter especially when you're ha hanging around this area this is an area that really gets damaged and has trouble recovering the most so a little tip is make it out of view another area is make it uh, in a place that's protected by weather where we have here we have our twenty thousand liter water tank and we have high perimeter fences along here and here. And to back that up, we also have an electric poultry net that we turn on at night in this area. Because electric poultry net is one of the best weapons against foxes, uh, especially during the night that is available.
Another thing you'll notice is this is a location of our three uh, compost tumblers. This is a, a must because as you walk out to compost, you are uh, making sure that you're doing all that excessive walking in one area. Now there's a couple of tricks um, that you can do to um, help protect your sacrificial area. One thing you'll notice with us is we plant a lot of pawpaw -paw, paw -paw and bababco plants all along here. And as these are heavy feeders and our backyards on about a two degrees uh, slope, it means they're constantly in a good supply. Another thing we do, which I really recommend, is get yourself a massive fruit tree for the area. Uh, something like a, a plum peach or nectarine that's a quite a heavy feeder and, that, and you'll get the benefits of the high level traffic uh, plus all the nutrients from the daily uh, you know, business they do. Um, the sacrificial area is key as a way to keep your garden overall clean. Another thing that you would have noticed in our, in our backyard is we run two coops. And the reason we run two coops is, um, is we have a coop here and a coop here. And we use this thing called a, a si Siberian heat management therapy, which is this thing that they do often in Russia where you let the chill chickens thermal regulate themselves. The minimum temperature for healthy chickens is 12.6 degrees. You can stop your chicken coop dropping below that in winter, especially you're guaranteed to have more eggs and a healthier chook. So if you have two coops that are mid-sized, the chickens will actually choose to migrate between two coops based on the weather. We find that this, especially in the Australian climate, is a key to a healthy chicken. Um, the more autonomy you give a flock of chickens, the overall better health it is. Um, and one other thing you'll notice in our sacrificial area, we have like a massive net that, that covers, uh, especially our second chicken coop because it's aluminium. And that net, um, we have a massive passion for it growing over it. So let's, without any more ado, let's have a little look at our sacrificial area. I'm warning you, it's a little bit messed up, uh, but that's why it's called the sacrificial area, A, and B, that's why it's around the corner, not in public view. So this is the uh, Bababco area we were talking about before. Really great to have in your sacrificial area. A small little pond for the ducks and a really, really great uh, heavy plum tree. We, we have had so much success with it this year. I think we're at the moment we're seeing about 38 kilos of plums and we really put this down to being a sacrificial area that gets really chopped up by the chickens. And you also notice a dog kennel in that area. So when the dog's resting, it's really close to the coop and the broody chooks, which as we know are slower off the marks. Now soft, as you can see, is getting attacked by a duck, which adds to the fun of this video. Stop it. Our final thoughts on free range chickens. Thanks so much for tuning in in our video, can chickens free range and not destroy your garden? By now, I'm hope, hopefully you've, we've conveyed to you the importance of chickens as an ally in the garden, no longer to be locked up in coops, shoved in the corner of the backyard and uh, thrown scraps once a week. Um, chickens, as I mentioned, are an important ally. So what are some of the benefit, benefits of free range chickens? Um, one of the, some of the benefits uh, for free range chickens are they eat any bugs they see, um, they fertilize your plants. How much do you get? Oh yeah, yeah. What Soft's getting at is uh, for a chicken to be successful layer, as, as many of you know, they need 38 essential vitamins and nutrients. And all that uh, goodness that they need in order to produce an egg uh, is then passed onto the ground. It's one study in uh, the UK uh, estimated that a chicken can lay up to, I uh, wrote it down here, 4,989 grams of manure a month, times that by 12 and you get about 58 kgs of manure a year. So although um, a flappy Q friend, a serious fertilizer producer, uh, enriching your soil, making it more resilient and able to handle, especially Australia's hot climate, we've got another 38 degree day. So, so, so what, what, what do you love the most about having free range chickens? I love their company. They, they're happy. Um, they, they're happier. They, they really like being outside. Yeah, they do really like being outside. You get to see all these beautiful interactions between um, your pets, yourself, and the the main benefit of a free range chicken is not just a chicken having a happier, healthier uh, life filled with more uh, increased well being. Uh, you also get to have a, a nice companion to follow you around. What people say, what about when it's multi time? When uh, the chickens start dropping their feathers everywhere? So, if, 
or if there is a build up of poop and you're having mates over, what are, what are some of the things you do? Um, you can run it over with a lawnmower. Yeah. No, that's not the chicken. Yeah, not all well said, not the chicken. Not yeah, the hate chicken. that. Not yeah, so chicken. if you really want to clean your backyard up for a guest over or a garden viewing, because we have some people view our gardens with a local garden club every so often, what you do is you put your lawnmower on the lower settings, uh, lawnmower around, and it'll suck up all the uh, any poop that's on the surface that hasn't washed down or any feathers. And let me tell you, high in calcium, high in phosphorus. Uh, feathers are fantastic micronutrient to add to your compost. Uh, as for pooping on paved areas like this, how long does it take, Soph? It to takes clean? about five to 10 minutes. And what do, you, what do you use to clean it? Uh, we use a high pressure hose. And, and the thing is, we spend three hours on our garden a week. That's what we budget. 15, 10 minutes hosing down before a mate get, comes over. Like really, it's not even a job to be honest. So do yourself a favor. Get those chickens out of the coop, get them out and about, protect against predators. And my very last consideration is chickens go to bed at night. Uh, everyone knows this, even kids in kindergarten, which means you get a really nice company and hard workers during the day. But once that sun get, goes down, the backyard's yours, get some nice lights away from the coop and you've got yourself an entertaining space. And I think we'll end with a bit of footage of how we use our garden at night once these girls uh, go to bed. They go to bed, we start the party. All right, thanks so much for joining us. Check out the last little clip of footage on how to use your, your chicken garden at night as an entertaining space, and we'll chat soon. Thank you. Bye. As you can see, once the chooks go to bed, you've got yourself a beautiful, lush paradise where you can have dinner parties, time with family and friends, or just have a quiet hangout at the end of a tough day. Hopefully, we've dispelled the myth that chickens ruin your garden and start a bit of a backyard chicken revolution where people and chickens can live in harmony. Stay tuned on our YouTube channel and we'll do some videos on uh, how to keep mice and rats out of your garden forever. Ornamental plants and fruit trees chickens don't eat. And flow hives, are they really all they're cracked up to be? Thanks for enjoying. Hope to see you again soon. Goodbye.